I'm Jeanette Patindol. My back, my family background is I'm a, I'm, I'm of a Chinese, Spanish, Filipino parentage. My my father is pure Chinese and my mom is half Spanish. My formal academic training is in business and economics. I have a degree in AB economics and a master in business administration. I still have to finish my PhD in business management. But that's the formal training, but in formal trainings I have also, well, my writing because it's always what I have always done and studied on my own. I also have special training in peace journalism and peace economics as well as in uh, peace and conflict reconciliation studies. I do journal writing, but when I do write outside of my journal, I write for publication. So I am clear that there's a certain audience in, that I am writing for and I have an idea already of which publishers to submit it to. Maybe it's because of my business background. I start with the market first. If there's, if there's a market, if there's an audience for it, then I write about it. So it's mainly just uh, my children's books, uh, Papa's House, Mama's House, and Tight Times, which won the Philippine Board on Books for Young People Award, Alfredo Salacta Prize, in 2004. And 2007. And then I had a third book uh, which was published in the United States by Living Waters. It's my one book, Mama. It's about uh, breast cancer and, and a mother talking to her daughter. And the rest of my publications are related to peace journalism and communications. But recently, I've shifted to writing now nonfiction for women because of my long experience in volunteering women and children, and all the stories that I've been told about uh, about women's lives from all walks of lives, and, and I've noticed a certain pattern sa mga concerns and issues of women, so I turned it into a book now, which is the Josa Way series, uh, which I'm publishing, and I'm independently publishing in my website, uh, josaways.com. By employment, I have been with the University of St. Lasalle for the last 23 years, but I recently uh, early retired last July 29 to focus more on my writing. Uh, other affiliations would be civic organizations, but it's the World Future Studies uh, Federation and the International Peace Research Association. I remember as early as eight years old, I, I already started writing in my diary. So I had this small notebook, na Golden Gate, na may spring pa na siya. And then every time that I was in grade 3 then, in Taitung, mag-recess kami. Siyempre, all my classmates would go out and run and play. And I would just sit by a bench under the tree and I would start writing <laughs> uh, what I observed and what I thought about what I observed. So that was that's the earliest memory of me writing. But unfortunately, I lost that diary. When I was 13, my mom already uh, gifted me with a real diary. So dito nagsugod. I have, I've been writing in my journal since then. Work. They are quite few. There are uh, three children's books, and then three children's books, and then now we have two Josa Ways books. So only five books. No? Three for children, two for women. But that Josa Ways is a series. I'm writing the third one. The other writings are academic. So they they. they um, they have to do with peace journalism and communications in the world. If I look back, siguro the influences are uh, because because my father was Chinese. We had uh, the usual the Chinese business. We had a bakery at Libertad, and although we had a house in Mansilingan, we mainly stayed at Libertad because we studied at Taitung, so lapit lang, matabok tabok lang. So there was a mezzanine floor of our store. We lived there upstairs. We only go home to our house during the weekend. So during the week, since we live in the mezzanine floor, just imagine Liber Libertad Market. Uh, your playground is the sidewalk. So, so my, my, our mom would not want us to play, of course, with the other street kids. And so to keep us upstairs in the mezzanine floor, though in a sense of the priest, so you cannot go out. So she would, she would lavish us with all the books we wanted, uh, all the coloring materials, all the art materials, and mga films, that mga classic na mga films, sa mga na Betamax and VHS. So I would think, so 
that situation physically we were bound though no na quarantine man but but intellectually uh, soulfully our minds were and souls were everywhere uh, traveling the world so in that sense um, i think that had an influence in the way i write uh, my books and my stories it's no nonsense in the sense i'm 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 using very very simple language uh, kay market ba lang ang culture? <laughs> sa libertad ka ba lang ang historian? Ay, why, why na yan, chiche? <laughs> Rikta-rikta ang, ang ano. So, sa siguro, di ra, ang nakain, I, I go straight to the point, but there are two levels. Usually in my writing, I have been told there are two levels. At, at, at the first time you read it, you think from a superficial level, it's very simple. But the second time, third time you read it, there's a, a may layer siya of, of well, philosophical and metaphysical na mga meanings underneath. So I would think that how we grew up in um, Libertad and how we were schooled in Taitung also, discipline and everything else, it affected the way I write mainly to, to save my soul. <laughs> For us who are artists, uh, we know that Bisan hindi ko niya pagbayaran, bisan huwag isa mabakal, bisan huwag isa mababasa. I have to do it because it's an expression of my soul. So if I stop doing that, I, I lose my voice. I, I, I don't know who I am anymore and I don't want that to happen. So that's why for me, my, my longest practice really is journal writing because it's, it's really a way of, of listening to yourself and of reclaiming your voice also. Especially today, in a world today, uh, we're inundated by so much information, we don't know how to think anymore. Sometimes we can't we can even hear ourselves think. Journal writing is a good way to bow it. You, you, you hear your voice, you reclaim your voice, and you know who you are. So mainly, I, I, I write uh, because it, it centers me. It, it reminds me of who I am and who I am about. There were times that I... I was 17, I stopped writing for a year lang, because it's a transition year. Uh, Though feeling, feeling ko doon na dula ko, no? So, uh, it's a way. For me, my, my, my craft is, is really between me and God. It's my, it's my way of preserving my own soul. Well, in the first place, I think everyone, are, everyone, every human being is an artist. When we are children, we are naturally artists. We create things out of nothing, we have rich imaginations. It's just sad that when we grow up, the influences of parents, of families, of society, ay hindi ka mag-amuni, kay mga ubra, ka sa opisina, or whatever. But all of us are artists at heart. So, if we, if we stay connected to that artist within, everybody has a responsibility to express their soul because that's your gift to the world. If you don't express it, you miss out on what you were supposed to be doing in this life. Well, as a writer, the main challenge is, is self-doubt. <laughs> uh, you, you think you're not good enough or your thoughts, your ideas, your words. Somebody has said it before, people have already done it. So the first the biggest challenge is the, you're, you're believing in yourself. But once you hurdle the challenge, everything else is... It's not, not so, everything else are not so big an obstacle anymore. So I think usually for most artists, ang first mga, the first demon you have to wrestle with is yourself. <laughs> Once you've got that, um, what, got, got that down, then everything else is hapos naman lang. For sa, muna sa akon, journal writing is, is a discipline and a spiritual practice because that's where you, that's where you struggle with all your, Self-doubt, minimizing yourself, not believing in yourself. All of these things, they come out when you, when you write in your journals. For me, lang, in my experience, happy happy kung ko ba lang na quarantine ko. <laughs> ang, ang sa akin, siguro, because sa ko introvert heaven di siya. Because I get to do all the things that I want to do and I love to do. Nga sa hindi pag quarantine, I could not do them because of work, because of other commitments. But in, because... What I really love to do are solitary things, reading, writing, meditation, walking, uh, just being by myself, listening to music. So all of those things are hiyang sa quarantine uh, periods. When I'm writing for that 
uh, avatar reader in my mind, I'm, I'm addressing to their need. I'm addressing their needs, their heart and soul concerns. So it's my way of It's my way of using my art to 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 address certain life concerns of human beings, regardless of age. So for children's books, I've actually been. Uh, they are considered pioneering because before this, daw wala pa nag-uso sa Pilipinas ang children's books dealing with adult issues. Papa's house, Mama's house is about marital separation. Tight Times is about financial hardship. That third book, Ang Sa States, na published publish is My One Book Mama, was about breast cancer. So, uh, before this book, subong we have so many books already addressing adult issues. So, before sina, uh, wala, kaya sa una, mga children's books, mga alamat, mga myths and legends, no? mga stories of our heroes, um, among na bala, that is not something that uh, actually faced by children day to day. So, that's good to say that because I, I wanted to speak to, I, I questioned the prevailing mentality. Ay, hindi na, hindi na pag-istoryan dyan ang kabataan. No? So, but I believe that children, gamay lang na ilalawas, pero ang ila soul, souls, ina iyaya ka, inchindi na sila kung mag-istorya ka sa pangabuhi. Ang istorya, as long as you are sensitive in the way you handle the language. I cannot imagine an artist or me as a writer writing something for nothing. <laughs> Wala, wala pulo, sila pala sulat-sulat-sulat lang ko kayo yung umian, gumamati sa words ko. Though, though I cannot imagine that, no? uh, as far as I'm concerned. Because when I'm right, it's always with a purpose. I'm talking to somebody. Whether what I write gets published or not, or gets read or not, that's secondary. Ang akong first na concern is, I'm able to reach out to this uh, avatar reader that I have in my mind. And once I'm satisfied, you, know, matyago, uh, though, uh, you have a feeling inside you, uh, nakuha ko, na, na, nakakommunicate kami, then I'm okay. I can release the manuscript anymore and anybody can say anything that they want about it. Pero ako, yeah, satisfied na ko sa ginubra ko. I'm happy about it. Art is always relevant <laughs> and essential because artists are the voice of the soul, of the, of the race, of the people. No? Uh, Whatever art you are into, any of the seven arts, it's when you create art or when you appreciate art, when you engage in art, you are connecting with your deepest soul. Eh? Whatever kind of art you are interested in. And so, when you're connected to that, you don't lose your way. So, there is no time in history that art has not been relevant. There was a time there was a time in our educational system na pangwao na din mga humanities kay wala ko nung kulos so may, may eskwila na lang kami technical kung ma-accounting kung ma-accounting lang ko my personal take on that is it's, wala sila pulos sa practical but when the hard times come the crisis times come ang kinanglan mo bala strength of soul and strength of spirit so if you are not fed art dali ka matumba pero kung you are nourished by art in all forms, in your life, in everyday life, when the hard times come, when the crisis times come, because you see more than what is there, na physical, that's the gift of art. So particularly in the pandemic, where everybody are forced to stay within their own confines now, you, you are used to entertainment provided by others. Ay, kapo Bregen sa uh, you have very kapupubre uh, sa imo experience and existence because you can actually stay at home and be entertained by all the arts in the world. You, you, can, you will never be bored. And ang namit lang yun sa art is, is it connects you to your own soul. As long as you are you feed on art, san bacang mo dawala kapag bilib ng artist na kuya. But you you appreciate you go to museums, you watch theater, you you feed on visual art, you do your coloring. It does something to your spirit. It enriches you, it strengthens you. It doesn't just connect you to your soul, it connects you to all, to everybody, to community, regardless of race, gender, religion. When, when people are touched by art, it's, it's, it's global. No? Music na lang example mo. Number one, be true to yourself. Don't, don't listen to the naysayers and all the people around you. Nga, hindi kayo magsulat-sulat kayo wala na or hindi ka magpinta-pinta kayo wala na yung kwarta magutman ka da but just do it for yourself be, be true to yourself just do it for yourself because 
your art will find its own audience someday. So never, never give up on believing in yourself and in your art. Uh, never do your art for, for com to pander to a certain group of audiences or critics or popularity or commercial success. If you do good art, it's the reward in itself. Ang ina yung magsikat ka, mag-bestseller, kakag ma, do pa aman ng siya icing on the cake na timingan lang guro ng your art speaks to them and so it becomes popular, you become popular. But we have had great artists who became great only after they died. No? So they might have been too way ahead of their time. You're doing your art to communicate with the public but on, on another hand, don't do it to please the public. And then, uh, and then give up on your own standards. Because if you do that, you're not really an artist anymore. You're just a paid hack, no? Bayaran kati, you do it. Pero that's prostituting your art. So do, never, never do that. Because if you do that, when you prostitute your art, you also prostitute your soul. You will notice that when when you write or when you do your art, la ina ang quality compared to the authenticity nga you're really expressing it uh, from your heart and soul. Basically, duha malang be true to yourself and never prostitute your art. Para no ni man, just, just to wake us up. But, but the, of course, the balance and director, that's what everybody's doing. So, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm about to go on stage. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, the, uh, yeah, that's where the discipline came. From.